Hey guys, I'm Bella, the Maker Mama boss lady behind Fiber and Fox, and I am here today with another pattern drop video. It's actually like a two for one pattern drop video. I am here to talk to you today about the Through the Rain Cowl and the Through the Rain Cowl mini version, because uh, this is my first ever pattern in a kid's sizing. So let me tell you some details. First off, I do want to mention that you're going to be able to find everything you need to know about me as far as blog, Instagram, shops, all of that, link down below the video, as well as links to the uh, Etsy and Ravelry shop where you can currently find these patterns. At some point, I may update it in the future if the patterns are available on my website as well. Not at the moment, but it is a goal. Um, and there's also going to be a blog post that's going to have uh, similar information to this video, but maybe a little bit more in depth, some more numbers and lots of tester inspiration photos. So you want to check that out as well. Everything in the down bar, link below the video, show more, all that. It's good stuff. Go check it out. For my pattern drop videos, I usually like to tell you a little bit about the inspiration behind the design, the yarns that I used, what you're going to need for the pattern, what's included with the pattern, uh, and tester inspiration, and lots of other good info. Uh, so let's get into, I guess, inspiration behind the Through the Rain Cowl. This is another one of my grain bow designs, if you can't tell. I'm not going to take it all the way off. I will throw in a picture at some point of the whole thing, um, but uh, winter hair static is real and I am not taking it off right now. But this is my daughter's version. This is the toddler. I don't have a child size version on hand. Um, but this pattern is going to come in adult, toddler, and child sizes. Child slash youth. Um, but obviously I'm wearing the adult one and I love me a grain bow. Gray plus rainbow. Uh, if you're familiar with any of my previous patterns, I do a lot of stuff in this color scheme because one, I like it. And the world just makes sense to me in rainbow order. But... Um, also because I like the reminder of looking for the rainbows in the darker times, looking for God's faithfulness and God's promises, um, when stuff looks really gray and cloudy and that sort of thing. Um, the name Through the Rain is actually taken from a old hymn called O oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go. And I do include the lyrics and the pattern as well if you're interested in more of the inspiration on the name there. Um, and other than that, yeah, I just really, <laughs> really like, um, incorporating rainbows into things. So I'm going to keep doing it. Hope you guys are okay with that. But obviously you don't have to make it in this color scheme. Uh, the other inspiration is, let me show you up close the stitch pattern. I really wanted to use this in a design. It is really mesmerizing looking, really complex looking, but it's not. It's a very basic crochet stitch with just a little bit of, not trickery, but <laughs> unusual stitch placement that leads to just this amazing texture. Just so cool looking. Um, I was really inspired by mosaic knitting, like slip stitches. Um, if you're familiar with, um, it's a good slip stitch design. Some of the stuff Andrew Mowry does where you're like, where does the like one row start and the next row end? Um, it's a type of color work in knitting, but you're only working with one color at a time and you like slip the stitch and then carry up. If you're not a knitter, don't worry about it. This is crochet. Um, but I was very much inspired by that kind of look. Um, and wanted to duplicate that somehow in crochet, but obviously you don't have the same kind of working with live stitches sort of thing. Um, so this is just a little bit of fancy stitch placement and it's not color work. You are only working one color at a time, one row at a time. You do not have to hold multiple strands of yarn or anything. So that was really the inspiration to create a knit like color work like design, hashtag make the knitters jealous, um, <laughs> but still have it be crochet and be really unique. So that was the inspiration behind this cowl. The sections on this are going to kind of bleed together. Usually I try to give you really separated segments on what I'm talking about, but we're kind of going to do the cowl construction and yarn and sizing <laughs> all together right here. Uh, I have my laptop on my lap if I'm looking down. But um, yarn wise, uh, what actually inspired this particular palette was I got, this is going to be a little crunchy, I'm sorry, um, a the bag looks so much nicer when, it, nicer when it was packaged up, but a Moody Rainbow, obviously I ripped it to get it open, Moody Rainbow um, mini skein set from Lane and Lotus. I had purchased this back in the spring. I looked on her website. It's still listed, but it's listed as out of stock right now. Um, and I know she's kind of taken a step back from dying, so I don't know if Jen's going to have this again in the near future. Um, but you can sub in any mini skeins that you like. Again, any color combo, any set, any skeins you've accumulated, advent minis, even scraps. I'm going to talk about yardage in a little bit. You're not going to need full 20 gram minis for each stripe. So you can kind of play around with scraps you may already have. 
Um, and then for the main color on mine, I also used a skein from Lane and Lotus. That shows up so much better than the bag. In the colorway, the mist. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but it does have little flecks of all the rainbow colors in it, which played really nicely with the mini skein set. So this, I made this one first and I wasn't planning on doing a smaller size, but I realized after I designed this and it was a totally reasonable cowl, like it's, it's pretty long. It's not like too short or anything. Good, comfy fit, got some room, but still snugly and cozy. Um, I had plenty of the minis left over and I was like, I mean, I can throw it in my basket and use it for socks or something, but I wanted to make my daughter a matching one. And I very often make my daughter stuff, but I don't, this is my first ever kids pattern. So I made a toddler version using the same mini skein set, just stuff that I had left over. And I subbed in a skein from another Connecticut dyer, sorry, crinkly paper again, silver key stitches. And this is a one of a kind skein, um, but it's most similar to her color that Snow Moon. I think it was a not a mistake dye, but one that didn't quite come out the right way, so she one of a kind did it. Um, but she does have a very similar gray that's got this sort of tonally thing going on. If you like that color. Um, so I used a full, not a full, I'll talk about yarn in a minute, but I used a main color skein, full 100 gram skein, didn't use all of the 100 grams. And then I was able to get the toddler size done with a 50 gram skein, but I would recommend probably using a 100 gram skein or a remnant of a little bit more that you have left over because I used all of the 50 and it was pretty tight on yardage. Um, but those are the yarns that I used. The other thing I do want to mention about yarn, you obviously don't have to use these yarns. And I always in the blog post give some other suggestions for maybe more budget friendly yarns or available at craft store yarns if you're interested in going that route. But you do not have to use these yarns. And this is such a fun one, like I said, to play with scraps. So do some stash diving. But what I really love about this texture, I don't know if you can see up close in this one, but the main skein, the gray, is a two ply, and then the mini skeins are four plies. And I think it just really does something interesting with the stitch definition. People get all iffy about mixing different plies together. That just means how many strands are in the yarn twisted together. Um, but I really like this one is also a two ply with the four ply. I think it just makes really nice stitch texture. So that's something to think about if you are going to do some stash diving. So sizing wise, I have mentioned it's going to come in adult size, child size, slash youth, and um, toddler size. The measurements for the exact circumferences and whatnot, I'm not going to list off here. They are in the blog post and the Ravelry and Etsy listings if you'd like to get a closer look at maybe choosing which size you want. Um, but I did want to mention that they are going to be sold separately in my Etsy and Ravelry shops as the adult size and then together the child and toddler size. But I'm also going to have a discounted bundle if you want to buy all three together. Um, just cause I wasn't sure if everybody wanted to include a child size in the like purchase price. So if you don't have a kid, you don't want to do mama and me sets, or maybe you just want to do kids sets for your grandkids or something. Um, you can get them separately or bundled together at a discount, just so you know. So the sizing is in the blog post and then yardage wise, I'm going to read off to you, um, in case you are subbing in your own yarn. So for the toddler size, the smallest one, you're going to need about 200 yards of fingering weight sock or one weight yarn. If I did not mention that already, it is fingering weight yarn. Um, and then in the contrast colors, I used a set, like I said, of seven 20 gram mini skeins. So they all came together, 20 gram minis, seven colors. Um, and the pattern is written in such a way that it's written row by row for seven colors, um, seven contrast colors and main color. But you don't have to use seven. It's very easy to modify and adapt. And I do give yardages and um, row counts and that sort of thing in the pattern. So you can change, change it up. A lot of testers did more colors, less colors. Very easy to adapt. And it's very repetitive throughout the pattern. So you just kind of have to do a little bit of quick counting and be like, okay, this is how many colors I have. This is how many rows. Sort it out. But if you're working with seven mini skeins or seven scrap yarns or whatnot, um, for the toddler size, you're going to need about 28 yards of each color of also, also fingering weight yarn. And then for the child size, about 290 yards of the main color and 32 yards of each contrast color. And then for the adult size, 355 yards of the main color and about 42 yards of each contrast color. Again, if you're using seven, you can go check out the blog post, the um, listings, and there's plenty of info in the pattern if you want to sub in uh, different colors. And I also give the option if you want to just do two random skeins that you have in stash. I also made a version for my mom that I think I can put a picture in. I think I have one 
um, where I just did gray as the main color and then I used a gradient cake. Um, so one of those like either a self striping or something that, you know, those ones that look like a bullseye. Um, and you can even do a variegated if you don't want stripes uh, and it came out really beautiful. So if you don't want to have to deal with weaving in ends or counting rows or anything, you just want to do two colors, it comes out lovely as well. So that's definitely an option too. Like I mentioned, I originally designed this one and then had leftovers and was able to make the toddler size one. Again, it's going to vary on which yarns you're using and um, how many mini skeins or scraps or stripes or whatnot that you're doing. But I was able to make this and the toddler out of a mini skein set. I had testers who did um, an adult and a child size with a mini skein set. And you can definitely make the child and the toddler together. I do not think you can make all three. Um, but if you're working with within the recommended yardages and whatnot and the fingering weight, you can definitely make multiples out of your mini skein sets if you have those. Or you could, you know, use Advent Minis, whatever, whatever you want. You could do it inverse, up to you. But I just want to let you know you are able to have some remnant left over on all of those colors. I usually like to give you guys some idea of what's going to be included with the pattern. This one's pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's going to be two separate PDFs or together as a bundle. All the sizing information is going to be in your in your pattern based on which one you buy or the bundle um, and help you pick the right size depending on your kid's age and all of that. Measurements are included, fully tested and tech edited. This one is not complicated, um, so there's not a video tutorial that goes along with it, but there are quite a few photo tutorials to show you stitch placement. I think you're going to be really surprised when you get into the pattern and you're like, oh, that's it. Like it's not, it's not complicated. And again, it's not color work. So do not be intimidated by what in the world is going on. Like with this color situation, I promise it's really actually very easy and kind of addictive and mesmerizing. Um, so there are some photos in there. Measurements are in there, yardages, all of that stuff. And if you have any additional questions, you can always contact me, but I do think that this one is a pretty straightforward pattern for you. As always, I had the loveliest and most creative testers and it's just, especially with a like striped pattern like this, it's such a joy to see what colors they pick. Um, and I think I was actually the only one that went straight rainbow. Um, so I'm gonna put in some tester photos here so you can get a little, bit, a little bit of inspiration, both in the adult sizes, the kid sizes, mommy and me, however you wanna go about it. Um, this again is just, it's a really fun stash dive. So I'm sure if you have any sort of fingering weight yarn in your stash, you can make this work for you. Um, so check out these different colors and get inspired. that's it. Hopefully that answers any questions you might have had about the Through the Rain Cowl or the Through the Rain Cowl Mini. And if you have any other questions, you can leave a comment down below. If it's something more specific, feel free to email me. I'm bella at fiberinfox.com uh, for email. And I'm always happy to answer questions or help you pick colors or any sort of thing like that. If you are going to be making this cowl, I would love it if you tag me on Instagram as at fiber.and.fox. And you can use the hashtags Through the Rain Cowl through the Rain Cowl Mini or Fiber in Fox Makes. That one applies to all of your Fiber in Fox Makes. 
as the tag implies, because um, I love seeing works in progress, finished objects. It just brings me so much joy to see what creative things you guys are doing with my patterns. It's just so much cooler to see what you come up with. Um, so I would love it if you share. I so appreciate any, any amount of support for this video, any like, any comment, any share, any repost, which is the same as a share. <laughs> Um, any pattern purchase, anything that you are doing in support of me, my channel, my designs, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Even if you just watch through, it makes a big difference for me. Engagement, it's huge. Purchasing, always appreciated. Um, but thank you for sticking around with me and waiting patiently for my designs. I know these took a little bit, but I'm really glad to have them out to you. Don't start expecting children's size patterns. I don't think I'm going to be doing kids garments anytime soon, but never say never <laughs> but i'm very happy to give you a child size cowl maybe we'll go back and child size some other cowls i don't know um but i cannot wait to see what you're making especially if it's a mama and me set because tag me in those and i'll just cry because they are adorable thank you so much guys i hope that you love this pattern and i can't wait to see yours